In this video, we shine a ray of hope into the pallet furniture industry by making the world's first bespoke pallet. Check it out. This video was proudly sponsored by Total Boat Epoxy. Very good. My name is Jason Hibbs and I'm a professional woodworker. I've always had a subtle animosity towards pallets. I mean, they're very utilitarian in nature. I get their function. You set things on them and for that purpose, I mean, they serve you very well. But somewhere in the course of their functionality, they began getting used for something they were never intended to be used for. At some point, a hipster or hipsters probably all hopped up on specialty coffee and mustache wax fumes, thought that it would be a good idea to start using pallets as furniture. Pallet furniture, to put it simply, is disgusting. They've had chemicals spilled on them. They've had insecticides sprayed all over them, fish stacked on them. Children may or may not have been conceived on them. For the longest time, I thought hate was an appropriate response. I thought if I just yelled stop loud enough that it would make a difference. I started a t-shirt campaign where I made t-shirts that just simply said stop making pallet furniture. I started writing letters to major corporations that use a lot of pallets, begging them to stop giving their old pallets to hipsters. I'd find myself passing by piles of pallets in alleyways and stopping just so I could deliberately pee on them. But at the end of the day, my hate, it wasn't making a difference. I was just another voice in the crowd. I felt lost. I felt hopeless. And that's when I decided I was going to try and make the world's first ethically made high-end bespoke pallet with the sole purpose of making furniture out of it. So the first thing I did was start studying pallets, trying to figure out how I could recreate this thing to be more beautiful, more functional. At first I thought just using a higher-end wood would do the trick. I looked at maple, oak, snakewood, ebony, but they were all wrong. None of them had that, that spark, that energy that I was looking for. Just a different type of wood wasn't going to do the trick. If this palette was going to be used to make furniture, it only made sense that it needed to be made out of furniture. So I called Jeff Mack. When Jason contacted me about this product, I knew we had to be in on it. This product's been missing from the market for far too long. Jeff Mack makes these crazy epoxy river tables. When it comes to the epoxy river table world, he's the best there is. Now, an epoxy river table isn't something I would normally put in my own home, but I dare you to find a better material to cut up and make into a pallet. So I placed an order for a beautiful epoxy river table. It was made of choice American walnut with a crystal blue river of epoxy running down the middle. And when I got this table and I opened up the package, I started rubbing my hands across its perfectly sanded surface. I literally couldn't wait to cut this thing up. So the first thing I had to do was break it down into rough pieces. So I put it on my crosscut sled and I ran it through the table saw, cutting it into nice uniform pallet size parts. Now I knew I wanted to make a, a smaller version of the traditional pallet because most hipsters I've seen look like 12 year old vegetarians and I wanted to make sure that they'd be able to lift it. After I had all my pieces cut, I decided to run them through my planer to reduce the bulk even more, really streamline the project. The other thing I've noticed about hipsters is they have very soft hands. I didn't want any harsh corners or splinters that they'd have to worry about. 
So I pulled out my trim router and I added a nice chamfer to the edge of each piece. And of course, I sanded each piece thoroughly, starting at 80 grit and slowly working my way up to 5,000 grit. Finally, it was time to start forming it into a palette. Now, I wanted to stick with the traditional palette construction and use nails, but I was a little worried that the nails would split the quality walnut and epoxy. So I meticulously pre-drilled every piece so that the nails would slide effortlessly into the wood. Now, I didn't want it to be shiny. That just seemed pretentious. So I finished each piece with a linseed oil to give it a, a subtle, underrated, but beautiful satin sheen. With each piece finished, there was really nothing left to do but nail it together. As I sank each nail into that wood, I, I felt my heart start to lift. This was the first time in my professional career that I was actually excited about a palette. I started imagining where this palette might go, where it might end up. Would it have some hairpin legs attached to it and be set in a feminist bookstore? Maybe it'd become a bistro table in a vegan bakery. Maybe somebody like Paul Jackman would rip it apart and create something beautiful. I had no clue where this was going to end up, but I did know that for the first time, the world would have an option for a high-end quality palette. This palette isn't cheap, but nothing good ever is. I'm gonna to continue to make these and have them available on my website. Starting at $6,000, this palette is everything you could ever want in a palette. It's got beauty, functionality, and inspiration. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna set a new standard in the palette furniture world. I never set out to change the world. But that's the funny thing about creating. You just start walking down a path. Maybe you don't even know where that path's gonna lead. And whether that path you walk is long or short, when you get to the end and you look back on where you started, you begin to realize change only happens when you have the courage to chase your dreams.